it's really hard to describe or get across the magnitude of this story in terms of connecting the truth narratives, narratives within the truth community about the connection between secret societies, the intelligence agencies, and child entertainment and pornography and all these types of things. So someone left me a link to a New York Times article and it's all right there. I'm going to read the title and give a few quotes and then just describe the magnitude of this revelation. So here it is from the New York Times. Disney linked to the FBI and Hoover is disclosed. From 1940 until his death in 1966, Walt Disney served as a secret informer for the Los Angeles office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, according to the documents that have come to light under the Freedom of Information Act. And this is a part of a book that's being released, Walt Disney, Hollywood's Dark Prince. Well, that in itself has huge ramifications, but this was originally published May 6th of 1993. And so this has been out there and we've seen all of these relationships continue and develop. And this is in part where it started. So the story starts with Disney breaking up some of his uh, animators who wanted to get better wages. And so he accused them of being communists. And he basically named names and this was that whole horrible thing that happened there. And then it says this, in return for Disney's information, J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the Bureau, allowed Disney to film in FBI headquarters in Washington. For his part, Disney allowed Hoover access to some Disney scripts and made, sl made slight changes in a few or lesser known movies and episodes of the Mickey Mouse Club television show to mollify the director. All right, so there are a couple more things here. It says, because of the information Disney provided the Bureau, he was made a full special agent in charge of contact in 1954. An SAC contact was usually a trusted informer who could provide transportation equipment as well as public relations service for the Bureau. Disney was not the only informer in Hollywood, while president of Screen Actors Guild, Ronald Reagan, of course. And it says this. As a bureau contact, Disney reported on activities of Hollywood actors, writers, producers, directors, technici technicians, and union activists su suspected of political subversion. The earliest communication between Disney and Hoover appears in July of 1936 memorandum in which Hoover writes, I am indeed pleased that we can be of service to you in affording you means of absolute identity throughout your lifetime. The meaning of absolute identity isn't clear, but the document signifies the beginning of a long-term relationship between the two men. So let's talk about these two men, shall we? Okay, so both of these men have been confirmed Freemasons, and they there is a lot of evidence that they were both involved in pedophilia, and then there's this idea of wiretapping and spying. All of these things began at that particular time in our history and these guys were not mentally right they had multiple issues personality issues psychological issues and i'll get into all of that and so this is where all of these things were intertwined and it's something that people in the truth community are always trying to prove that there exists some collusion between these government spy agencies secret societies these pedophiles and Disney and child entertainment, which we can now see was already documented in 1993 by the New York Times and by this author of this book. And these are the documents the FBI had. So they're not saying all the things that happened between these two men and the relationship. You just get the documents. You don't get every secret meeting. You don't get what's implied. You don't get all these things that they do in these secret societies. But this is damning enough. Okay, so first of all, I've talked about Disney being a Freemason. Here's J. J. Edgar Hoover, 33, Grand Cross, Fidelity, Bravery, and Integrity. And this is Freemason Dwight Eisenhower presenting the Grand Cross to uh, J. Edgar Hoover. 
And it says this. This is uh, from the Scottish Rite Journal, which is a Freemasonic publication. This May, thousands of former agents of the FBI and legions of Americans will commemorate the 25th anniversary of the death of its number one crime fighter and one of Freemasonry's most renowned brothers, illustrious J. J. Edgar Hoover, 33 Grand Cross. And then it says this, His administrative genius, high personal standards, and die high your hard patriotism helped make the Bureau one of the most powerful, influential law enforcement organizations in the world and a model of excellence and integrity. None of those things are true. Hoover was as devoted to his Masonic brothers. He was raised a Master Mason on November 9, 1920, in a Federal Lodge No. 1, Washington, D.C., just months before his 26th birthday, during his 52 years with the craft, he received innumerable medals, awards, and decorations. In 1955, for instance, he was coronated a 33rd degree Inspector General Honorary and awarded the Scottish Rite's highest recognition, the Grand Cross of Honor, in 1965. And with Disney and Walt Disney World, he had the Disney Masonic Club, various other places. It just, just wasn't one location. He had another one in New Orleans. He was often seen wearing Freemasonic garb. It's just a well-known fact that Walt Disney was also a Freemason. So here you got have two very powerful and iconic men, people that uh, you know their names even years and years after their deaths. They set the stage to a lot of the issues and problems with our government, with child entertainment, with uh, pedophilia being rampant in these powerful or powerful positions in our world, spying and a loss of personal liberties and uh, just privacy and these types of things. All of these issues that plague us and are always being covered by people in the truth community. And these guys had a big time relationship. So getting a little bit more into the character of these men, J. Edgar Hoover was a longtime closeted homosexual, and he had a, an unhealthy and abusive relationship with a longtime lover. During the same period of time, he spied on all of these famous people, and he v videotaped and wiretapped them, engaged in sexual encounters, which he used to blackmail them. This is well documented in various places, but he was a peeping Tom. The guy just was creepy. If you hear him speak, you look at his face. He was a creepy dude. He was really into, he is a control freak in a way that we know about with all of these. The way the NSA works today and the collection of data and every, everything that's being spied upon started with this guy. He was really into this just this paranoia and getting great joy out of recording people's sexual interactions. So this guy was a psychologically disturbed, creepy dude. And he used a lot of nefarious false flag type events to move this agenda forward. And now we have this monster NSA. It all started with this dude, like I said, and he was a Freemason. Walt Disney, on the other hand, we know about, I've covered in multiple videos, Grew up in a se severely abusive environment, and he seen there was lots of evidence that that guy was a serial pedophile. Bobby Driscoll was one of his uh, like young boy type uh, abuse victims, and there's lots of documentation and evidence about their relationship. So you have two sexually deviant and mentally ill people who were control freaks, very power hungry. They had this sort of. Uh, demonic totalitarian view of their respective agencies and business. They ran their business with an iron fist. They spied on everything. Again, these control freaks. And they came together, Freemasonic brothers who came together to set the tone. So you have J. Edgar Hoover looking over Disney's scripts and giving suggestions. Oh, this could be friendly to the Bureau. Why don't you put this in and I'll let you film in the Bureau and you can have this title, you know, this is this really bad relationship because we know that the CIA and the FBI and these secret societies are manipulating what would be considered art, what would be considered 
artistic expression, but it's being infused with agendas, with all of these types of agendas. And we know this today, the CIA and these agencies all are putting information out there in the news media where they plant stories, where stories are covered like news. They put, they actually have <laughs> script writers and a lot of these movies are exclusively written by these agencies. And of course then there's the secret societies and all these things that go along with it. And all of these guys have sexually deviant type tortured souls and they're connected to demonic energy. I mean, of course, that's not here, but this is, that's all part of it. I hope people can see this because people in the truth community are always getting hammered for making these suggestions. And here it is. It's just out there in the public view. These are connections between our surveillance program. Again, this paranoia. You can't control things, and that's just the way life is. Bad things are going to happen. People are going to die. That's just part of life, and dying isn't a bad thing. When you look at it, but this fear-based, when you look at it as a natural outcome of your life, eventually all of us are going to die, then why would it be bad? Why would our death be a bad thing? And all of it. And so when you try to control these events that can't be controlled, and you do it in a paranoid way, and you collect information, just this you know, spying on people, just violating their trust, all of it. I mean, I'm talking about everybody in your life, everybody that's around you, and you don't have any normal natural rela relationships because you surrender knowing that you have faith that there's a plan, that there's a God, and even when bad things happen, there's a reason for all these things. The system works. The divine system works. But when you try to control events that you have no control over, that you should have no control over, your life is horrible, your life sucks. And when you do it as, as a nation, as an institution, over millions and millions of people, or in this case, the world, then you get the kind of world that we have now, trying to create outcomes to events that you have no say in and have no control in. It's always going to backfire. The things are going to happen. They're going to happen anyway. But we have this frenzy this controlled system, and it's hurting everybody. And then you have these mentally ill, sexually deviant people on top of that, and they have their own demons that they're fighting, all these things that they're ashamed of, and they're not good people. They're not good. They shouldn't be in these leadership positions, and yet they are. And they're intertwined, and they're both putting their agenda. Disney's agenda is being run through this powerful organization, the FBI and Freemasonic agenda is being run through Disney's child entertainment organization. And how many people have been warped or at least changed in, in the, for, the worst, for the worst by all of this indoctrination that's being infused in them through what they consider wholesome and child safe entertainment? And then you have the Pentagon uh, where it was revealed that there was all of this pedophile type material at the Pentagon that all of these people were using. Uh, people that worked there had all, it was just this epidemic of child porn and things like this going on there. And did anybody go to jail? I mean, there was this was revealed in the national media. And you see this time and time again. I talked about that guy. Um, Michael Aquino, that creepy-looking Eddie Munster guy that formed his own Church of Satan, the Church of Sat, and he was a high-ranking colonel in the military in charge of psychological operations, and he was involved in this Presidio uh, child, these, these military children who were being sexually abused, and no one went to jail and all these types of things. You see these relationships being documented in the mainstream media, and so whatever's being revealed there is just the tip of the iceberg. I hope people can understand this. These guys were paranoid. They were extremely secretive. They were in these secret societies. They had these hidden parts of themselves, and they were good at hiding the parts of themselves. Very, few, very limited amount of this information is ever going to come out. And so you just understand what you're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. So what else was being done here? That's the thing about all these things. There's much more, there's worse things, more graphic things that were going on here. But just the indication that there was a connection here between the intelligence agencies, these pedophiles, these secret societies, 
and child entertainment and all the rest of it. And this is something that's been well documented. It's proliferated since then. These relationships started, at least this is when we can think they started. Maybe they started before this. But you think Disney was the beginning of these child entertainment sort of networks, TV and all this stuff, his movies, all this animation. And they had an agenda. And the agenda was tied to these other dark agencies. And we now see that is, you know, it started there, but it has incubated and metastasized and grown into this evil cancer. And it's just all right there. Okay, so this is just something I think everybody should be aware of. It's something that we all need to think about because it's been documented here. And so we know this goes beyond the point of speculation. We know that there's these deviant relationships and this is where it began. All right, this is Paul Romano reporting from the apocalypse. Everybody have a blessed day.